These cities were actually found by Masons first. They organized the World Fairs, which seemed like camp since everyone had a passport number and they would hold it up like an inmate. It was claimed to be the fastest built building in the world, 5,000 square meters, capacity for 2,000 guests, 600 rooms, 30 apartments, and it was supposed to be built in 53 days. Look at this, Jedi, like in Star Wars, electric sword, electromagnetic fights, the knights, they didn't use their swords just with like uh, battling like in Game of Thrones. They actually had power and electromagnetism and energy. Welcome back. My name is Renee and this is Highly Motivated, a channel where we check out different things that I find interesting and hopefully you will too. Today, we're going to be talking about child trains as well as world fairs and we're going to ponder the possibility that our true history is something far different than the narrative that we have been told. And I would also like to thank my subscriber, The Wicked Son, for reminding me of this topic. And if anybody else has anything you would like me to cover or you want to see on this channel, my email is in the description of every video. And if you're new, please subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so that you're notified every time I make a new video. And hit that like button. Without further ado, let's get into it. Well, let's get right started with the orphan trains. Between 1854 and 1929, nearly a quarter of a million orphaned children were resettled under what came to be known as the orphan train. A man that went by the name Charles Loring Brace was the first Freemason in charge of the orphan train movement in the USA. After the reset, many cities were completely empty. Notice there's always a Freemason behind... <laughs> These cities were actually found by Masons first. They organized the World Fairs, which seemed like camps since everyone had a passport number and they would hold it up like an inmate. However, they repopulated these empty cities with children and families from around the world from 1854 to 1929. This operation took children from their parents from several countries and many states here in the USA. These children were stolen and bought and sold into slavery. What better way to repopulate these empty cities and indoctrinate these children? And while researching this topic, it dawned on me, doesn't Disney always have motherless children or there's orphans? So I decided to look into it. 56 of 140 animated feature films distributed by Disney since 1937 have characters who are orphans or has a missing or single parent or their parents were killed. We know why Disney keeps killing parents and the predictive programming always goes pretty deep. And at the same time of the whole orphan train operation, we see that there were many insane asylums and that's where they put possibly their parents, all the woke people, the people that were red-pilled and wouldn't go along with the programming. That's why they got treatments and lobotomies. Wow, that, that is crazy. And you know what? It makes perfect sense. So they use the World's Fairs as a sort of like re-education camp, if you will. And all those who didn't want to go along with it were put in the insane asylums. Like why? Where do they get all the people to fill these giant buildings that they've since had to close down? I don't think so. Something's up with that. Did you know that in our not-so-distant not past, babies were created and incubated en masse? This happened and was showcased as attractions at the World Fairs and even in New York's Coney Island. Can you even imagine carnival attractions where people paid to watch babies growing in incubators? Where were the parents? What happened to all the babies? Well, have you heard of the orphan trains? Mm -hmm. 
they were packed off and shipped out west to help repopulate the great Tartarian cities found abandoned across the land. They were sent to humongous orphanages and the people were able to get orphans to work their farms and factories. Free labor was abundant and it was needed to rebuild after the last reset. There is loads of evidence showing that the original Cabbage Patch kids were these orphans which people just simply picked up and took home like fresh produce. Many children were basically indenture servants and were subjected to lifelong slave labor and sexual abuse. Everything they taught you is a lie. America was covered with empty Tartarian cities left to rot after the Great Reset and those that followed grew a few millions babies to repopulate and rebuild. They dug out those cities and started over. Research Tartaria and ask questions. Suspend your disbelief. Like, follow, and share. I definitely think there was a civilization that was already here and they repurposed it. And it seems like all the old world things that are left, they've kept for themselves and it's, I'm sure it's to hide things, right? And I, I feel like maybe what was torn down were things that had technology that they didn't want us to know existed because if they were making babies like that back then, I mean, the Bible does say there's nothing new under the sun, right? The Centennial Exhibition of 1976. Did you know the first World's Fair in the United States was in Philadelphia in 1876? And you may ask, what is the Philadelphia World's Fair? The mainstream narrative claims it was created to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. It was held in Fairmount Park with nearly 10 million people in 37 countries attended. But some things just don't add up. For example, the main building was the largest one in the fair, enclosing 21 acres. It was also temporary, keep that in mind. And apparently it just took one year to construct the main building. How are you going to build this structure in addition with another 199 structures in just three years? I mean, come on, it took us nearly four years to build the SoFi Stadium in California in 2016. And you're expecting us to believe they built this in one year with just horse and wagon? You can also see that the architecture is very similar to the other world's fairs. That makes you question, was there really a civilization here before us, and are we living in their remains? Comment your thoughts and theories about the world's fair, and always remember to do your own research. Like and follow for more content like this. I've also read that the glass exhibition buildings were built in less time than it took to produce the glass that they were made out of back in that time, according to the official narrative. The impossibility of the world's fairs. Would take today, if you had a place with no electricity and no way to pipe it in, the generators that would have to be built. For example, there's a building that went up to the Barcelona Exposition in 1888. It was claimed to be the fastest built building in the world, 5,000 square meters, capacity for 2,000 guests, 600 rooms, 30 apartments, and it was supposed to be built in 53 days. This is supposed to be a time of horse and buggy. The two-year building times are actually impossible unless the two most likely theories would be either A, they had a technology that they're not supposed to have, and it really was built in that time frame. Even if they built them, they had to build them out of marble and stone in record time, or the buildings were already there. They'd been there for hundreds or thousands of years, fixed up, refurbished, repainted, hence the term whitewashed, which is the term that was used for the Chicago Exposition, which was paint all the buildings with this brand new spray paint that they had just developed to spray paint all the buildings in record time so you couldn't tell if anything was old or anything was new. How long did these things tend to stay open? When they built these things, supposedly over two years, which is the narrative, how long were they there for six open... Months. 
six months for the public to come. And then what was amazing, for example, in St. Louis, two days after the fair ended, they brought in a demolition team from Chicago with explosives and blew the thing up. They actually used dynamite to blow it up, and they say threw it in landfills. The things like the World Fair shows there was a time in our past, and even not that far in our past, where humans seem to be at a completely higher level. Human living and human knowledge were constructed into the buildings using cymatics, using sacred geometry. These fairs, they're so important to study because the history that we know right now as history was invented at the time these fairs were going on. One of their underlying nefarious purposes was to teach a historical narrative to the population that they were supposed to believe and agree with. And scarily, the world we're walking into today is in some way has its origins during the time of these fairs. I mean, we know that entropy is a fact, and what better way to control people than to lie to them about their actual past? And the doors are always huge, right? So in my mind, I'm, t I'm thinking this is pre-flood civilization. I don't buy the hundreds of thousands of years because I go by the biblical timeline, right? So I'm saying it's pre-flood, right? And that would explain the mud. Let me know what you think in the comments. This one is a long one, but I thought it was worth it. And there were words above and below, but I zoomed it in because the pictures are great and I wanted you to be able to see them well. In the middle of nowhere, uh, charging. I guess the electricity bill was super free back then. This is in 1900s, in the first decade. You just charge your car, that's it, you don't care. Um, now they come with all this Tesla stuff, and you see how nothing is new under the sun. Electrically, uh, carriages, this is in 1898, imagine. Uh, two years before 1900. This is in New York, electric cars in series, so it was supreme. You know, imagine these cars, just to the, take the horse, and you have this. And then they tell us after the Second World War that we have to use gas and petrol and oil because, you know, we don't have electrics. Um, of course, you have electric cars. You have also electric canoes and launches for the water. Nothing new under the sun as well. Look at this. Jedi, like in Star Wars. Electric sword. Electromagnetic fights. The knights. They didn't use their swords just with, like, uh, battling, like in Game of Thrones. They actually had power and electromagnetism. And energy so that's where the jedis in star wars come look at this everything is fighting with with jedi swords so now you know where star wars got it from nothing under the sun and the energy we speak about is electromagnetism which is infinite and yes. uh, probably these are the swords uh, that the gods uh, we call them the gods had as well uh, free electricity harnessing the gods as in the fallen angels right and isn't it funny how they didn't want us to have electric vehicles until it, like, fell in the line with, like, the control aspect? <laughs> Ridiculous. 19th century, you see no wires, nowhere. Um, very big uh, streets, uh, not for horses, but probably for some other devices as well, so probably from the previous humanity. Cookers and heaters, but everything with electromagnetic wireless technology amazing stuff these are some kind of portable devices again for the purpose of energy i guess because of this whole thing how they look like and the 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 designs and everything just like in the in the big buildings uh portable again energy devices and look at this energy street uh no wires so i guess everything was wireless as well There's lots of russian places like these um and also in europe it says like also street tops they had a solid grasp of energy and the way that things work, the way the universe works, right? And the Bible says that the angels had all the knowledge of the way everything worked, right? And so it would make sense that in the past, this is what was used, and they would be trying to hide that fact. Atmosphere, ether, who knows? Call it whatever you want. This is a cool stuff because, you know, it's like on the postcard, it's very old, it's a crystal palace. And again, I'm just wondering if this was there yes. from the previous humanity because um, 
of so giant and then it suffered a mysterious fire like all of them and this is the mercury arc rectifier we've seen for the car this one is used in a building mercury was very very important for energy and and free energy and everything else so i guess there is a reason why they say about it it's to, this is the the mercury arc rectifier for the charging batteries of the cars so you see we could have infinite energy but they tell us it's poisonous obviously we're not allowed because um that's how things works work um uh, zeppelins zeppelins never gets old it's no i'm not saying it's not poisonous but why it, it's funny that they push how poisonous it is and not any of the things that it can do that are positive <laughs> whole thing uh, massive stuff so imagine humanity was um traveling through air maybe in the 1700s and before uh with no problems old street lamps so you tell me if they built these street lamps and they also built the infrastructure below them or if there's not any cables and how do they work uh, wireless free energy hey nikola tesla but this is like before the times of nikola tesla so awesome stuff or well, actually during the times um you tell me where the infrastructure with the cables is you know because un unless they have the cables underneath but no and i don't see any fire so awesome stuff if it's electromagnetic wireless so i cannot speak about them because uh, you know people don't like this you know people don't like you when you tell them that we don't know our origins of the age. people would they get mad at you and defend their programming instead of thanking you for opening their eyes to it. They want to be like this. 1800s, but, you know, uh, some movies and TV series, they go into this and uh, they actually speak and tell you certain truths. But that's probably too much for the big majority of people. And uh, it, it was a sad history we had as our human species developed in the 1800s children were mistreated for a lot and over and a lot yeah. of years and then nobody speaks about the adults of these people and uh, yeah yeah i'm not gonna go because uh, i'm just showing it to you because i'm trying to open your mind a bit and then of course you can investigate on your own but you know and again this is in queensland this is in 1898 look no wires so awesome and look at those buildings and then look at that uh, tram uh, electricity and then when the electric motors died well use your horses because that's what humanity does uh, queensland victoria free energy bells or something like that i mean i call them free energy because you know they look so odd in the middle of nowhere there in the cities and then who built these cities in in australia and new zealand so in canada and all the, those countries that are so young with immigrants and anyway, nothing new under the sun radar and all the drawings so imagine even like in those days there were radars and so the technology existed all the time and there you go electric russian electric these are in russia you see russia and why are they all so similar it's almost like they were you know part of the same you know group of angels who fell to heaven and their children lots of electric everything was electric and then now they come oh you have to use electric because well we could have used this for the past 150 years but uh no okay so uh these are stupas going small so i guess if these are stupas in small size used for something to do with an energy then um mm. the stupas and pagodas in asia which are big buildings and they're probably used for energy as well look wow. at the energy st louis and san francisco world expos so much light you know this is the power of humanity and this is the forbidden technology because now we have to pay for it so um but i wonder back in the days how did they pay for it and what did they have the infrastructure and then they said oh we have to you know we've just built this in like a couple of weeks we have to demolish it because oh yeah right so you demolish it because you know you don't want certain questions but regarding the past of humanity gosh i'm speaking too fast this was in sweden i guess uh definitely looks mighty amazing so it was like in the 1950s or something again these infrastructures with metal and huge and then we have like more fires the great fire of pittsburgh and boston in the 19th century remember the comets remember that the technology from the airships remember like is this like a normal fire to you does it look more like a bombing or like intentionally artificial destruction and so many cities look at this um the ancients um and the same thing we see in the cities 
uh, with the with the streets and everything you see these structures for energy and electromagnetism and ether it's awesome mm -hmm. you see in and and I think that maybe the destruction could have started with the flood and then you know when they went back in they went through and like destroyed various things like kind of like how when they went to Saudi Arabia they plundered um Gilgamesh's tomb and all of the gold and things like that um they it, you know they of course the US has plundered a few countries the old world, like in the ancient world, as we call it, and then in the old world, like Russia, or like what we see in the maps, uh, in different places, and even in America, even in, uh, this is in Russia, by the way, and this one, and Australia, and all that stuff. So, weather control, look at this, weather control on cigarettes. So, weather control, now you see how um, um, nothing new under the sun. And those, I think, are the, all the photos. So, which one is your favorite? Let's just finish with this amazing stuff, the Mercury Arc Rectifier. Imagine what kind of humanity we would have. But then again, humanity did allow something odd with this, which I'm not going to speak about because, you know, people don't like that, do they? Oh, yes, and this is very awesome as well. Now we just have to compare this with what happened during the Second World War in, in Europe, and you will understand. Oh, but that's too much. So, uh, see you next time. Okay. Um, I definitely, he had some pretty good points. Um, there's definitely an underlying story that we are not quite privy to. But, uh, you know, as the knowledge has increased, I, I, I feel like we are uncovering more and more holes in their stories. And I don't think they ever really thought that people would be doing that or and taking their you know their words to account and and comparing their stories and seeing if they fit and make sense and they don't a lot of them so we're going to hear a little more about these orphan trains oh my days now this is how you can rewrite history with the orphan trains so the orphan train movement was a supervised welfare program that transported children from crowded eastern cities of the United States to foster homes, located largely in the rural areas of the Midwest. The orphan trains operated between 1854 and 1929, relocating about 250,000 children. So let's do the maths. Imagine when these children grow up, they have two or three children of their own. Let's say 250,000 times three. You're looking at 750,000 adults that had their names changed and their place of birth changed. How would you know who's who? Or how would you know who you really are? Right. By the looks of it, this was big business. And of course, there was corruption. And what I want to know is where was all the parents? You see, it's not hard to rewrite history. All you need to do is get rid of all the parents and elders, relocate the children, and you can teach them anything. And they will believe you. And most people have, right, like their grandparents were from another country, right, and came here. Um, and then some people can't even trace their family trees at all. Um, my grand, I'm of French descent, and my grandparents both go back to Charlemagne. The Spectacular World's Fairs. The Spectacular World's Fair Exposition Univarels in Rare Pictures 1899. The sheer magnitude and, and just magnificence of those buildings and it, to be able to go back in time and to be alive to see that. 
Okay, last one. What if I told you, in 1893, there was a city in America that looked like this? Would you believe me? Well, this was the Chicago World's Fair of 1893. And this looks nothing like the Chicago that we know today. And you may be asking, what is the Chicago's World Fair? Apparently, it was a celebration of the 400th anniversary of Christopher Columbus's arrival to the New World. It was also made to present the world's newest innovations, inventions, and ideas. They also tell us that these buildings were temporary and were only made for the fair. And just tell me, do these Greek Roman looking buildings look temporary to you? And just look at this structure. This was the mines and mining building at the World's Fair, one of the many magnificent structures. And this was the agricultural building. Just look at the details of this temporary building. And this one is the manufacturers and liberal arts building. And this is the Golden Door Transportation Building. All of these buildings have insane amounts of detail. Yes. And keep in mind, there were 690 acres of buildings like these. All of these which were apparently temporary buildings. And come on, you're telling me these had to be destroyed because they're built on a lease? And come on, if you were building structures like this, you would not be building them on a lease just for a year. Many people believe these were the remains of an older and more advanced civilization and that the people that write our history are trying to hide that from us. Let me know your thoughts on the Chicago World's Fair in the comments. I highly suggest that you do your own research on this topic too. Like and follow for more content like this. The size of those doors is insane. And I don't know if you know this, but a lot of these towns, actually all of these towns were bought as as towns already and they already had houses and architecture and uh it's it's so strange um let me know if this is a new topic or if you've already heard of this but i wanted to thank you for joining me once again and until next time stay highly motivated